what are edge functions and how are they different than serverless functions? That's one of the questions I get asked the most. So in this video, I'm going to do my best to explain you what edge functions are and what's the difference between them and serverless functions. Before we can understand edge functions, we first need to understand what serverless functions are. Simply put, serverless functions are functions that are run in the cloud. So basically you can define a function, put that function in the cloud and then call that function with a URL. There are many places you can place your functions in. For example, with AVS you have AVS Lambda and with Azure you have Azure Functions. Another way you might already be using serverless functions is with Vercel and Next.js API routes. And that's because Next.js API routes are actually uh, run as serverless functions. So with Next.js API routes, when you deploy your application to Vercel and after that make a request to your API route, there is not a traditional web server running 24 seven waiting for you to call that function. The function is actually started and executed independently when you make the request. I know this can be a little bit hard to wrap your head around. And to be honest, uh, I don't either fully understand everything that goes, goes down behind the scenes. But I think the most important part is that we understand the basic principle behind that logic and behind serverless functions. Advantages of using serverless functions compared to traditional web servers or virtual machines is that you only pay when the function is executed and not for the uptime of the server. Another advantage is that serverless functions are easier to scale. And that's thanks to the fact that you can just spin up more instances of them easily when you need them instead of setting up new servers. One of the biggest disadvantages of serverless functions is the possible slow startup times. This happens when a serverless function needs to do so-called cold start. And cold starts happen when a serverless function is not used frequently and a service provider, for example, Vercel, needs to spin up a new serverless instance from scratch and that takes some time. Another disadvantage is high latency. So serverless functions are executed in the data center where they are deployed to. So for example, if you deploy your function to a server in San Francisco and someone from New Delhi calls that function, the geographical distance between the client and the server is so long that it will take some time for the request to travel from New Delhi to San Francisco and then back to New Delhi. And in this kind of cases, the latency will be higher. So in conclusion, serverless functions are executed in the cloud on an as needed basis. Advantages are pricing and that they are easier to scale than traditional web servers. Disadvantages are possible slow startup times and high latency, thanks to the fact that users need to connect to the data center or server that the function was deployed to. And this can be in the worst cases on the other side of the world. So what are then its functions? Well, in short, they are serverless functions with just a couple of differences. The number one difference is the location that the function is deployed to. As we learned about serverless functions, they are deployed to a single data center or server. And whenever someone wants to execute that function, uh, they need to connect to that single data center. With edge functions, this is different. Edge functions are not deployed just to one server, but they are deployed to multiple servers that are geographically located around the world. This is also where the name edge comes from because the functions are deployed to the edges of the internet. So when a client wants to execute a function, it doesn't have to connect to a server on the other side of the world, but instead it will be routed 
to the nearest server that the function is deployed to. This reduces the geographical distance that the request needs to travel and that way also decreases the latency. Another difference is that edge functions use a different runtime than serverless functions. Serverless functions can use multiple runtimes depending on the service provider. But at least virtual edge functions use the Google's V8 JavaScript and WebAssembly engine. And this means that there is a limited set of APIs inside of edge functions that you can use. So in conclusion, when we are talking about edge functions, we are basically talking about serverless functions that live on the edge. In order to have our functions on the edge, we need to have this edge network and infrastructure in place. And this is something that the service providers like Virgil or Netlify provide. At this point, I want to thank DataCMS for sponsoring this week's video. DataCMS is very user and developer friendly headless CMS. It pairs super well with Next.js and it's easy to use their GraphQL API to fetch content from the CMS to your Next.js application. DataCMS also has a worldwide CDN, which means that your content, images and videos all live on the edge. And as we just learned about the edge architecture, having your content on the edge means low latency and that your users will get their content super fast. I highly recommend that you check and try out Dato CMS. I have a couple of videos that will get you started with Next.js and Dato CMS, so I'll be sure to leave a link to those down in the description. Thank you again Dato CMS for sponsoring this video. Personally, I think the Edge is coming more and more popular. And I think it's one of those things that every web developer who cares about user experience and performance should know about. So to learn more, watch this video over here next.